Okay, so we have a linear equation here with fractional expressions. There are numerous ways this problem can be solved. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you one that I find useful or easy or safe or convenient. Here is the basic idea. This is a fraction, this is a fraction. We can make this as a fraction by growing a one. We would be rewriting it as x plus six over one. We, we would bring the three fractions to the common denominator and then with a sweeping multiplication, we would just wipe out all denominators. What would be the common denominator? The common denominator would be 63. So we're gonna rewrite all three with a denominator of 63. Seven to 63, that was multiplication by nine. So we have nine times x plus five minus 63. Nine to 63, that's seven. So we have seven times two x plus one. So we just, we just brought the three expression to the common denominator and now we're just gonna make it all go away by multiplying by 63. Then what is left is nine times x plus five minus seven times two x plus one equals 63 times x plus six. And I just, I'd just like to make one comment here. Wait with the distributive law. If you rewrite it as 14 x plus seven, chances are you're gonna mess up the sign in front of the, the one that will become a seven. If you don't rush into distributing, this parenthesis will be there to protect you. The most dangerous spot in this problem is when you multiply negative seven with that plus one. Okay, so now we're just gonna apply the distributive law, combine like terms. Okay, shape it. it's getting nicer, shaping up. Let's add five X to both sides. Let us now subtract that 378. Ah, that's good news. This is 10 times 34. This is two times 34. So we're in good shape. So we divide by 68. We're gonna get minus five equals two X. A few comments. First of all, eventually you're gonna be able to go from here to here. It's not that difficult. Let me just show you how, how you do it. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes when you write too much, it gets cluttered and you cannot read it. We identify 63 as the common denominator and then we're gonna multiply by it. So when I grab x plus five over seven and I multiply it by 63, well, 63 is divisible by seven, it's seven times nine. And so that gets knocked out and you're left with a multiplier of nine. So basically you're gonna say, okay, we're multiplying by 63, cancel out the seven, I still have nine left. And the same way, multiply by 60, 63, the nine cancels out the nine in 63, we get seven left. And this, you just have to multiply the whole thing, thing by 63. And my, my advice is don't, don't distribute. First, wipe out the denominator so you're not gonna get, this is the dangerous spot in the problem. Okay, my second comment. Even if the problem doesn't say so, if you have the time to check, you should check. It's a really good feeling when, you, when you're sure that your answer was correct. So when we check, we, we take our solution, right now we think that x is negative five, to the first line that was given and we're gonna substitute it and see whether the two sides are equal or not. Which is one more reason why you shouldn't mess, out, mess with the first line. Don't cross out, don't, don't do anything visible to it. So the left-hand side is x plus five over seven is minus five plus five over seven minus two times minus five plus one over nine. And that's zero minus negative 10 plus one over nine. That's zero minus negative nine over nine. That's zero minus negative one, so that's plus one. What about the right-hand side? The right-hand side 
is minus 5 plus 6. That is also 1. So if we substitute x equals negative 5 into both sides, we will find that the two sides are equal. In other words, negative 5 is a solution of the equation. Thank you for watching.